we're going to be talking about some of the things that every violinist needs in their violin case, the absolute violin essentials. Violin, pretty standard. The bow, definitely need a bow to make a sound on the violin, but that's really easy. I'm here to talk about the absolute essentials that you need on the violin case. So besides the violin, the bow, I'm gonna talk about some accessories that I recommend for every violinist to have in their case. First and foremost, you need pencils. I cannot stress enough why you need not just one, but two pencils in your violin case. I can't tell you how many times I have students come into their violin class, they have one pencil and they lose that one pencil and then they don't have a second one as a spare. So always make sure you have two pencils just in case one always loses its, uh, its place in the violin case, whether it's on the violin music stand or you left it in rehearsal. Always make sure you have two pencils. Another item you need in your violin case, although it's not a mandatory thing to have in your violin case, but it definitely helps as an essential, is a shoulder rest. This is the Kuhn Bravo that I use that I absolutely love. And this has really helped me prevent injuries. That's what the whole point of having a shoulder rest is to prevent injuries. Now, some people may think that having a shoulder rest will dampen the sound of the violin. It really depends. You can play without a shoulder rest and get the maximum volume, but then be prone to more injuries or have a shoulder rest, maybe dampen the sound a little bit. And there are different shoulder rests out there that actually don't have any difference in sound. You can put the violin shoulder rest on and really like, you will hear a difference in the dampening of the sound. With this Kuhn Bravo, there is a difference in the sound for me, but it's not a big deal, and that's I'm totally fine with that. I find it to be really comfortable on the shoulder. Another small but overlooked item in your violin case that you should have, which doesn't cost much, is a chin rest wrench. And I carry this everywhere I go just because maybe there might be a day where I'm experimenting with my setup and I want to move the chin rest a, a little bit to the left of, of where I have it originally placed, or just as a simple violin teacher tool to have this in your violin case. A lot of times students come in their violin lesson with very loose uh, chin rests and just to help prevent some of the rattling sound that they're experiencing, just having a chin rest wrench and really tightening up the chin rest could be an easy solve for you. So yes, chin rest wrench, highly recommend. I'm gonna put that right over here. Next up on the list is peg compound. Peg compound is um, this this material that you put on your pegs in between the, the peg box and the where the peg meet. The reason to have this very necessary tool in your violin cases, sometimes depending on the climate in which you're in, whether it's dry, whether it's humid, it's always good to have this so that way you have the pegs be very stable and you're not going to be really um, struggling for intonation. However, if you're fed up with just adding compounds to your violin pegs day in and day out every single season, then something you might want to consider installing on your violin are fixed gear pegs. And that's something that I've kind of been thinking about about my violin, although I don't have that much trouble with tuning my violin. Usually it's really stable. That could be a result of the strings that you purchase. It could be the, the climate. It could be all sorts of different things. So besides that, really important to have in your uh, violin case. The next item on your list is definitely a must have because some of you live in metropolitan areas or you li or your living situation requires you to be silent after a certain hour and you wanna practice at night. And this is where I love using the Artino practice mute. This is not very expensive, this is a rubber mute. I am of the schooling that having a rubber mute, like having a metal mute but covered in rubber just like the Artino practice mute really helps you out in dire situations. If you desperately need to practice for something, if you're a conservatory student, you have deadlines and you need to practice at night, this is one um, great fix for you to, um, to use. Now, I don't recommend using this all the time because it does change the way you play. You might be too comfortable playing with, uh, with this practice mute. And that's why I'm not too big of a fan of practicing on an electric violin all the time. I think electric violins have their place in the music repertoire. They have their place in the rock genre, the pop genre. But I think it's also healthy to be able to practice on an acoustic just so that way you can really feel the vibrations of the instrument and the vibrations do change when you have a practice mute. So, you know, use this wisely. It's an amazing tool, but use it wisely. Next up on the list, 
super important, definitely need it, is vial and rosin. Vial and rosin is essential to having in your violin case. Not just any type of cheap rosin, you wanna have a good rosin. You may have a less expensive bow, but having a good rosin will actually prevent you from having a trouble in the practice room with a lot of scratchy sounds, unless that is your goal, if that's what the composer intended, of course. But this rosin I have for a very long time and still, still a beautiful color right over here. It's nice and amber. But using a rosin helps you with your musicality. It helps open up so many different sound colors for you to really um, explore on your instrument. You know, your violin and your bow are your canvas. You have your brush and your canvas. So you wanna make sure that you are using um, really high quality paint, which is what I call this in metaphorical terms. This is the paint that you put on the brush that you can make a sound with. And having a good rosin will definitely help you with that. It's kind of like using a cheap brand color pencil if you're a color pencil artist and using like a color, like a true artistic color pencil that you get from a big art store. Because someone who is an artist will understand the difference. They will feel the difference. This is something that you really cannot see, but you can really feel it while you're pulling the bow on the string. So having a good cake of rosin, definitely worth it. Definitely really important to have in your selection of violin essentials in your violin case. The next essential item you should have in your violin case is this tiny thing. Now, what the heck is this? If you're seeing this for the first time, this is what's called an orchestral mute. An orchestral mute helps dampen the sound, not as much as the, the Artino practice mute, but it's sometimes you will be called into a situation in your orchestral music or in your chamber music or even in some select violin repertoire that like um, I'm thinking second movement of a uh, Korngold Violin Concerto, you, you, you are in need of a mute and it helps dampen the sound but still project. So if you are really in a situation where you are not desperate to keep things silent, you, know, you don't have to use the practice mute but you can use an orchestral mute. I've seen this all the time. Next up, you want to have strings, right? But not just strings. You wanna have two sets of strings. And having two sets of strings will encourage you to have um, the, the strings that you need in case your string kind of decides to kind of rip itself open <laughs> and you are out of luck with strings. I've had situations in the past where I didn't have an extra string on me and it was bad juju. Uh, one of them being I was playing in a music festival 10, 12 years ago now. Oh God, 12 years ago. I was playing in a music festival 12 years ago and I was playing the first violin of Schubert uh, string quintet, third movement. <laughs> it was awful. It was awful. And I had to play everything an octave lower for the rest of the movement. And it was one of those moments where it was really humid it was an outdoor music festival. It was very human for most of the time. And then I had to uh, readjust the humidity in my violin kit because it became really, really dry from a very humid climate. So that's one of the things that you have to pay attention to. But if you are, if you are performing, if you are a regular performing musician, you need to have an extra set of strings that maybe you can argue that they could be used strings because you will, have broken them in already. New strings usually typically settle in 24 to 48 hours depending on the string and the tension. So definitely uh, have a set of strings for that for that purpose. But if you're looking for other violin accessories and essentials and product reviews, I recommend that you check out this playlist over here for you to take a look at.